it's pouring rain, but I haven't recorded a video in like two weeks, so, uh, oh well. Also, warning, this video will contain spoilers for all three of the How to Train Your Dragon films, as well as the two TV shows Race to the Edge and Riders slash Defenders of Burke. If you understand the chronology of the copious amount of How to Train Your Dragon lore via movies, shorts, and shows, then you know that by the end of Race to the Edge, which takes place before the second film, the Burkeans are on very good terms with the Berserker tribe who also ride dragons, or at least Dagger and Heather do. Yet, during the battle between Hiccup and Drago Bloodfist in the second film, neither Dagger nor Heather are anywhere to be found. So, why didn't they help? Hey y'all, I'm the Geek Apprentice and it feels so good to be talking about how to train your dragon yet again after a very long time. I intended to make this video much earlier so it would be out in time for the 10 year anniversary of the first film, but here we are. <laughs> Throughout the two How to Train Your Dragon TV shows, we see amazing character arcs for both Dagger and Heather as well as their relationship to the Burkeans. We begin with Dagger as a power-hungry nutcase and Heather as a lying thief. But by the end, not only have we learned that these two are siblings, which Heather did not even know for a time, but also that Heather actually has a great heart and has been through quite a bit of troubles, and even Dagger is capable of change and becoming a warrior and defender for dragons. Hence, both the Hooligan and Berserker tribes become friends. So this begs the question of why Heather and Dagger, along with their dragons Windshear and the Triple Strike, did not come to the aid of Hiccup and his friends when they were up against Drago Bloodfist and his Alpha and his followers. A battle which resulted in the death of Hiccup's father, Stoic the Vast. A battle which perhaps their skills could have turned the tides a little bit. Okay, to be sure, the logistical real world answer is clear as day and I will discuss that too. But um, that's not as fun and kind of leaves a little bit of a plot hole, so here we go. So the reason this plot hole exists is because the series Race to the Edge, although it takes place story-wise before the second film, was not created and released until after the second film, thereby forcing the hand of the creators to make sure that everything that happens in the series coincides with what happens in the second film. This is why, as perfect as they are together, we never get a full romantic relationship between Fishlegs and Heather. Heather and Dagger don't exist in the films alone, though they do exist as lore. Hence, the fact that the second film has that side story of Fishlegs and Snotlout vying for the hand of Roughnut dictated the course of the relationship between Heather and Fishlegs. That's just how it is. But this also meant that inevitably there would occur some errors in the story between these two TV shows. I mean, in the first one, there's a kind of bit of a throwaway line that doesn't make sense considering what happens in the second film. It's a minor line, but it's kind of weird considering that series did actually come out before the second film, the very first one, Defender, Writer, Burke, but it's a minor thing. And then there's this. The fact that despite Hiccup having these great connections to other dragon riders and dragon defenders, they are nowhere to be seen or give aid in the second film. And I'm actually talking about more than just the Berserkers, as we know that the Wing Maidens also have dragons and are allies to Burke. There's Mala and her people too, but by the end of the Netflix show, her tribe has combined with daggers because they got married, so that's a moot point. And honestly, they could not have brought any of these characters into the third film either because frankly, that would have been way too complicated for a movie-only audience. Us crazy obsessive fans, yeah, we probably would have been fine, but frankly, it would have been way too much to put that many characters and side stories in a film, in my opinion. Once again, this whole scenario stems from the fact that the second film, while it takes place after Race to the Edge, was produced before Race to the Edge. And although we were introduced to Heather and Dagger in the first series, which did come out before the second film, their characters had not been fully explored. We didn't know really that much about them or where their character arcs would go, so they weren't necessary to the second film at that time anyway. Is there a way to fill in this plot hole? Is there a way to give reason to why these close, trusted allies are MIA and it be somewhat satisfactory story-wise? 
I'm gonna try. Look, figuring out what happened to the tribes and their dragons after the third film, that's not too hard, and I have a video explaining what probably happened anyway, but this is different. And I'm going to give two weird ways to look at this, explanations if you will. One of them involves three different story reasons why this may have happened, and one is looking at it from a more philosophical perspective and how when you understand Hiccup's character arc and his journey, yeah, it's probably good they weren't there in the movies. Beginning with the former, like I said, I have three possible story explanations. Was there a falling out? It could have been a situation where those other tribes, they weren't hurting the dragons, so there was no need to intervene in that kind of battle, but they're just no longer allies. This is slightly possible when you consider the time frame of the second movie. I believe that even if something happened to cause a massive rift between these three communities, given their characters, they would have tried to assist Hiccup anyway, putting aside their issues for the good of the whole. However, the second film takes place over the course of, what, a couple of days? That may not have been enough time for word to spread to them. Because who knows, the issue could have run so deep that Hiccup didn't even think to ask for their help and thus it would have taken a few days for word to spread about the predicament, because we know how stubborn those hooligans can be. One could argue that Hiccup would put aside his pride for something like this, however, it's precisely his pride, to an extent, that gets him into this situation and his altruism, but pride was in there. Not to mention that finding his mother probably clouded his brain a little bit. I've been slouching this whole time. Am I saying that, should this be the case, no one thought to call upon the wing maidens for the berserkers? Yeah, the time frame is just short enough and the situation just chaotic enough that perhaps no one thought to call for aid. Little bit of a stretch, I know, but I do think it's plausible. Of course, that leads to the other question of what would cause such a rift, but I digress, sticking with the topic at hand. Piggybacking off of that last one, maybe there wasn't a big rift, but considering the time frame, there really wasn't enough of a chance to call for help. Absolutely, they may have thought to send a terrible terror with the message about their predicament and even wanted to, but everything was just happening way too fast. Now, I'm less inclined to believe this option considering someone, if they were still allies, would have thought to send a message some way, somehow. I mean, come on, we even know that the Berserkers have an alpha living underneath their island. Oh. Option number three is dark. Something happened. Yeah, that one alpha lives under Berserker Island. Perhaps something or someone enraged it. Perhaps Drago did something and disaster fell upon the Berserkers and the Wing Maidens when they tried to help fell to it as well and the Birkins don't even know about it or couldn't get there in time. It's a dark shot in the dark, but given Drago's thirst for the alpha dragon, it's plausible. But if so, shouldn't Stoic and Hiccup have heard about the whole rampage of Drago a little bit sooner? Only about a year takes place between the end of Race to the Edge and the beginning of the second film, so it's very possible that word had not gotten to the Burkeans yet that maybe this just happened a few days prior to the second film starting. Once again, a very dark thought to have, but I'm also grasping at straws here. So those were some story-specific possible explanations, and personally, I'm more inclined to go with the first and the third option, and less the second one. But that's just my reasoning. But now, let's look at this situation from the perspective of storytelling. What advantage would bringing aid to Hiccup do? Might have prevented Stoic's death? It's possible, but as horrid as that was, from a character development and writer's point of view, that was necessary. The entirety of the series concerning Hiccup, our protagonist, situates around his growth. His ability to believe in himself, his strength, his unique mind and abilities, and the second film forces a lot of that. In the first film, we see the beginnings of him realizing his own strengths through Toothless their friendship, how he helps them to fly again, changing the minds of the entire tribe, including Astrid and his father, because his passion became stronger than his fears. The second film challenges his altruism and passion. Those are great traits, but are they enough to be a leader? It was enough for him to lead his friends at the edge, but to fill his father's shoes? Eh, I mean, he doesn't want to be a leader, 
but that plays into his reliance on adventuring with Toothless, making everyone love dragons, creating awesome inventions, all great things, but he will have to become chief one day. He will have to adult more. There's more to leading than just those three traits. So while he discovered the power of those natural abilities of his in the first film, the second one challenges how far they can go and the fact that he will have to be a leader eventually. He can't just fly around on Toothless all day. He has to grow up. And of course, the third film shows how he can't rely on Toothless as his source of strength. He has to rely on himself and others leading beside him, Astrid. In order to stand on his own, he has to let Toothless fly on his own. Toothless revealed what his strengths are, but is not the source of them. Big difference. But anyway, I always get sidetracked when it comes to the third film. It might be my favorite, but also they're all my favorites, so there's that. My point is, from a character development and story perspective, because we're focusing on Hiccup, the death of his father was almost something he needed to go through in order to grow into the man he was meant to become, from, again, a writer's perspective. Adding all those characters, as much as I love them, would have been too confusing. And if they did, in fact, prevent Stoic's death, that would have stunted Hiccup's growth. Again, from a writer's perspective, I'm not saying death is wonderful or that it's something you have to endure in real life. But from a writing perspective, that was the thing that was going to push Hiccup forward. I think most writers could tell you that they hate killing characters, but if it furthers the growth of their protagonist from a story perspective, then they do it. It stinks, but it... Does it make sense? I hope this makes sense. Also, I'm, again, trying to reason out this plot hole. <laughs> Maybe I should have just stuck with the story reasons and not gone all philosophical, because I know y'all just love it when I go philosophical, because I always make so much sense. I swear, it makes sense up here. <laughs> like I said, I'm inclined to believe that either there was a falling out and no one was able to call for aid in time, or something tragic happened to both of those tribes. Both are equally sad and depressing options, but they're the best and most logical ones I've got. Though I do recognize that both of those options kind of create a different plot hole going into the third film, possibly, but... Yeah. Nope, not going into it. Too far. Too meta. <laughs> If you are a fellow How to Train Your Dragon geek, definitely let me know by telling me in the comment section below who your favorite character is. And yes, the dragons count as characters, because mine, well, no, it's still Astrid, but also Stormfly, but also Hiccup, also Toothless. Just let me know. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you might consider looking into my other content and joining the geekdom by subscribing. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter if you feel like it, although Twitter is pretty much just primarily for posting when I post a video because notifications are weird on YouTube. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. But anyway, that's all for today. Thank you for watching.